This video is brought to you by Miniature Market. Thousands of board games, discounted prices, miniaturemarket.com. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Today we are going to be reigning as kings and princes and dukes and we're going to be trying to stay on top and trying to be plastering our faces all over the village with our statues. We're talking about Tumult Royale. It's a game for two to four players. It takes about 40 minutes to play and it's designed by Klaus and Benjamin Tauber. Klaus Tauber is the one that uh, made Settlers of Catan. So this is his latest. He designed it with his son Benjamin. Let's take a look. I'll show you how it's played. I'll see you on the other side. In Tumult Royale, you are trying to place as many statues as you can because the one who places the most statues of themselves around the different villages is going to be the one that wins. Everyone gets their own player board with their colored castle, a way to hold their uh, their statues. We all start with uh, twenty with a three-player game, twenty followers or supporters uh, that will differ depending on the amount of players. We all start with a people show no mercy tile and we all start with a ranking in a three player game you'll play with a ranking of one two and three you'll either be the queen they're the king but you can also flip these over and play the female side so that's a queen you might be the duke which is the second rank or if you want to play a female side the duchess or if you're the third person in a third player game you might be the prince or you might be the princess depending on what you choose now the game board itself is modular. This is set for a three player game. With a two player game, this breaks apart and closes in and then there just be basically two of them like that. And if there's a four player game, this actually expands and then there is another row of, of sort of tiles there. And just to show you closer, this is what we have set up now as a three player. Two player would look like that. And four player looks like this with all these in the middle. These other gray tiles will get flipped later in the game. Now before we start, starting with the lowest ranked player, so in a three player game would be the ranked number three, the prince, he would place one of his statues on any pasture field. So maybe he puts his, 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 guy, his statue there. Maybe the blue player goes here, and then maybe I uh, go like that. So everyone has placed the statue, because I was king, I would go last. And when looking at your board, you take it from left to right, so I know that I have one statue placed, because that's the last spot on the left that is empty. Now each round goes through seven different phases. We're gonna run through these and show you how it works. First, we're gonna gauge the people's sentiment. Now we're gonna be taxing these people, but first we find out how much they need. So we do the spinner here and it shows us four, which means the people need four of each good left for them because we're gonna be collecting them from them as taxes, but they demand that they have at least four of all the, the goods. We have bread, we have marble, and we have tools. Then we get ready to take, uh, collect taxes, but what happens is each player randomly takes three of these tiles and takes them out of here. So there would be a total of nine tiles taken out with three players, and we would take all those guys out of there, and then we would get ready to start. So what happens now, after nine tiles are taken out, this timer, which is 20 seconds, you can just use a timer app on your phone, or you can use this. You flip this over, and one, everybody at the same time, simultaneously, can only reach one hand in, and you'll look at it, like this, and then you'll either put it back or you'll take it. So maybe I need, ooh, three bread, I'll take this. I'll put it right on my player board. Uh, ooh, there's a tool in there. Let's try to find some more tools. Uh, I want a bread, ooh, two stone, you know, let's take that. Uh, let's go here, three bread, I already got bread. Let's see, let's go, let's, let's go find some good stone. Oh gosh, let's see. Actually, I do need some good tools. And you're not showing anybody, you're just kind of looking at it yourself. And let's take that. And let's take that and let's say it stops and the timer's over. So let's say this is what I ended up taking. A three bread, a two stone, and two things of three tools. Now, after that's done, we would flip over what's left and we'd look to see if there's any tumults. So here it's like basically resolving the potential tumults. So here we need four of everything. So we check first. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight bread. Bread is good. Ooh, then we check stone. There's no stone left. So what happens is we look and we find the player that has the most. Now, I only stole two of those, but maybe someone stole a lot more than me. Someone stole maybe three or four or five. Someone stole more than me. What they would do is they would take all their tiles except one, the one with their lowest commodity good, and they would throw it back to the people. So they would get rid of this, and this is all they would be left with. If there's a tie, the higher ranking person is the one that's the greediest. Now, not only do you throw back all your tiles of that commodity good except your single lowest one, which means sometimes you could be the greediest and all you have is maybe two doubles. 
And so if this is all you have, but yet you were the greediest, you throw one away, you still get to keep this because it's the lowest one that you had. And then after that, because you're the greediest, you lose three supporters. So if it had been me, I would get rid of these five supporters, which essentially is currency. I would get two back, and so I would have just lost three. And we've done bread and stone, and then we would look for tools. There's only two left, but they needed four, so there is a tumult. And it's me, I have six. So I'd throw away my lowest one. In this case, they're both, they're both tied for lowest. So I would throw this back, I'd get to keep this, and I would lose three supporters, just like I showed you a minute ago. Next, we'll be placing statues in rank order, meaning king, one, two, three, and four going in that order. Uh, people will get to place one statue, if, or place a statue in one place if they can. Now, normally you can only place adjacent to where you already have at least one statue. So here I could place here, here, or here. And since these get placed in order from king down, I'll go first. And here's the different places that you can build, and this is how much it costs. Now, like I said, normally you can only build next to it, but if you wanted to build in any pasture or any forest, you can do so, but it costs twice as much. For example, the pasture here is one bread and one uh, marble, and here you gotta do two of each. But let's say we wanted to build in, let's say, the mountain. One bread, two tools, and a stone. So I would give one, I would give these tiles, and I actually have three bread, so I'm actually overpaying by two. I have two of these, I'm overpaying that by one, and I have three of these, I'm overpaying that by one. So I actually overpay by four total goods. Now I can't just randomly add more tiles to purposely pay more. Uh, so here, I have, I'm paying this, I'm gonna build it, and I have four left over. So I would discard those tiles, I would pay this, I would put my statue right in the mount where I wanted, and because I used more, four more, the people are happy with me, so I actually gain four. So I'll give myself a five, get rid of one, and I actually just gained four supporters. Now you'll notice that some of these places actually have more than one statue. So if you build in a village, for example, this yellow place would get to select two statues to put there. And let's say the blue player went there and everyone has placed their statues this round. Next, we would redistribute ranks. Essentially, we count up all the supporters. So let's say I had 21, and let's say I had the highest. I would keep this. If there's a tie, the player who had the higher rank between the tie makers before the redistribute gets to, gets to be basically the king. Uh, if someone else took the king from me, they would get that, and we'd see where I ranked. Maybe if I was third place, I would get the third one. But in this case, let's say I had the most, I was the king. So you re redistribute whoever has the most supporters to least supporters, getting the best rank to the lowest rank in that game. Now, we crown the new king. Now, because you're on top, well, people are always gonna hate who's on top. People always hate the president or the king, so you automatically lose five supporters. But, you get to place a statue in the next spot out here. So you basically get a free statue placement. Now, as the round goes on, people are gonna be placing more and more statues because every person who's the king at the end of the round will end up placing statues. So let's say at the end of the third round, I place here. Now, at the end of the third round, you see, with two or three players, we're going to flip one of these tiles. With four players, we'd flip one. The king would decide which one to flip at the time, and let's say he decided to flip this one. They would flip this tile over like this, and then we would continue. And you'd continue with putting more people, uh, maybe, uh, you know, yellow, put a statue there, and maybe blue, put a statue there next. And again, here we would flip over the last two tiles. So these would get flipped over. Now, notice that when we flip this one over here, um, this one has a palace. That one actually has three spots that you can, when you build a statue there, you build three spots like that. And there, well, there's only one palace in this game. Last game we played, there were a ton of palaces. And when flipping these tiles over, basically you just, you can't look at them beforehand. You can't, you can't move them around. Essentially you just take it and you flip it and usually flip it towards yourself is the way you do it. So some things can look like they're upside down, but I was making them look nice here. And the last thing we do is receive mercy. So what happens is we look at the person who has placed the least amount of statues. You quickly look down and see I have placed four. Maybe someone else has placed it. Well, the, the person who placed the least or all the players that placed the least get to flip this from people show no mercy to people show you mercy. Then next round, when you were looking for uh, tumults and people are getting taxed and getting all mad, essentially you stole one item less than you really did. It just makes it a little bit easier to steal a little bit more things, a little bit of a catch up mechanic there. And then you just continue doing those phases throughout the rounds. Now eventually you'll get to this spot and then the king, for the rest of the game, when they get the king, they get to put two statues here. And then there's a number. Every time you put at, the, at this point, you check the number of 
The difference between the person who has placed the most statues and the person who has placed the least statues, if it's greater than this number, the game ends. So as you see, it gets closer and closer and closer, and the game's probably going to end somewhere in here. And the one who has the most statues, when that happens, wins. Now, I've reviewed a handful of Klaus's games over the last year or two. Uh, and unfortunately, I haven't been extremely favorable on any of them, but I keep trying his games because I, I, I obviously he's a well-known designer and I, I want to see what he's doing. And this he designed with Ben, his son. And I got to say, he knocked this thing, they both knocked this thing out of the park. This is an excellent game. You know, a lot of times you know, look at a game, you say, oh, is it good? Yeah, it's good. It's got a lot of things to think about. It's good at this. Is, is the strategy good? Yeah. Is the replayability? Yes. But a lot of times we just miss the one sentence. Is the game fun? This game is, if I was just to say, how, how is this game? What is it like? It's fun. It's just pure fun. Uh, it's got good strategy. It's got, so, you know, it's a lighter game. It's sort of like a gateway game. You know, you've got that light strategy as to what I'm going to go after. You have that push your luck element that's, you know, a little bit lucky. Some of the tiles you really want that round, like the triple tools to build this, the palace, might not be in there because nine random tiles or three per player are taken out, you know, at the beginning of every round and you're trying to figure it out, you know, trying to get them. The pressure luck of looking at the tiles and trying to go. Now, I've played a couple of games where you're trying to do that. Everyone's trying to look at tiles and take them. And I've never been fully engaged with any of the games that have done that. They've all just been okay for me, like Mondo and Pressure Cooker and things like that. But this one, I really liked it. Everything thematically fit in this game. I really like that about that. This is sort of what I would typically look at and go, ew, this looks like a dry euro. I'm going to be bored to death. And granted, the theme might be a little dry, but it's really really connected to every part of the game. It's like you're trying to be king, so you can put statues all over the place, and you're taxing the people, and you're pulling the stuff. But, hey, if you took too much, they revolt, and whoever's the greediest has to give it back, and they lose a bunch of supporters. And then with all that stuff, you're placing statues in different areas, and then you're seeing which one is the new king, but then the king loses some followers. It's like, it's really cool. Everything is just super thematic in this game, which you don't see in a lot of Euro games, so I like that. I just loved how it was a good balance of strategy with luck, with that press your luck element, with good balancing of, hey, once you get on top as a king, you lose some followers, but you get to place a statue. Oh, you have the least amount of statues? Well, you can you can be a little bit more greedy next turn and try to catch you up. It's very balanced, it's fun, it's quick, and the theme just resonates everywhere through it. This is a ton of fun. Excellent game. In my opinion, if someone ever says, oh, have you ever played that Sailor Catan game? I'd say, I have. But the same guy designed a new game that just came out. This is his latest work. In my opinion, it's a lot better. Granted, they're quite different games, but this is like beginner to resource management with some fun things. I could probably play this with people that don't play games, and I definitely played it with my gamer friends who really liked it as well. So, great gateway game with resource intro to resource management, a little bit of area control, and some pressure luck. It's a great package to Mult Royale. And because I love it this much, I'm going to be keeping it in my library. And for that, let's induct it into the Game Boy Geeks Gaming Library with a saxophone serenade in sort of a flavor of king uh, or chief, maybe. <laughs> This video was sponsored by Miniature Markets Review Corner. The Review Corner features podcasts, video, and written game reviews by gamers for gamers. Miniature Market, the online gaming superstore. Thousands of board games, discounted prices. Check them out at miniaturemarket.com. <laughs>